When I was a young teenager, no aesthetic had me in its grip like grunge and edgy. I was a teen of the 2010s, which meant Rolling Stones t-shirts, Doc Martens for school, and very bizarre headbands. I was reminded of my love for studded belts and black lipstick when I saw Taylor Momsen on Gossip Girl as Jenny Humphrey. I love the idea of waking up one day like Cat and Euphoria and having this makeover which makes you seem more intimidating and makes people really see you for who you are. In this video, I'm going to recap what edgy or alternative fashion really means, why you might want to think about your kibby body type when creating an effect, and how each of the body types uses different techniques to create this edgy, intimidating, alternative, rebellious style. My name is Ellie Jean, I'm a personal stylist, and on this channel, we use body types to elevate our personal style and end the war with our wardrobe. So what is edgy or alternative fashion? For a little breakdown, I think that you can start describing alternative fashion long before the 20th century. And I think that the way women did this back then was by dressing in more masculine silhouettes. I think that Jo March in Little Women is a great example of how you might do this to contradict the uh, very restrictive corsets or even long dresses, skirts. Another example of where you can see this is Anne Lister in Gentleman Jack. I think they present this kind of style really well in that show. I don't know how much this really existed, but if it did exist, I think this is what it would look like. Then I think in the 20s, again, we see this sort of rebellion against traditional fashion for women with shorter skirts and again, more masculine silhouettes with dresses being very straight, hiding the contours and curves of your body and this was one of the first ways that women sort of rebelled against their traditional style but of course this was still the mainstream so we wouldn't really call it edgy but I think this is one of the first examples we have of where fashion begins to go in a completely alternative direction and it's the first time we might see that promiscuity is one of the defining factors of this edgy alternative style which is sometimes still a factor in what we see as edgy alternative fashion. In the 30s and 40s, fashion of course took a bit of a back seat due to the landscape of war. However, we do see in Hollywood actresses like, I don't know how to say this, but Theda Barra? She was called the vamp and we begin to see these darker sort of styles come in. And we also get the introduction of horror movies. This need for darkness starts to show up. And also some of these styles are explored in pinup fashion in the 40s. In the 50s, we get the use of the leather jacket for the first time really as a fashion thing. Before this, it was just used for fighter jet pilots and it's the first time that it's used to make someone seem more edgy and alternative and this is the greaser styles we see this popularized in greece which was made a few decades later to show 50s fashion where you see danny in that typical leather jacket this was made popular by marlon brando and james dean and then of course we have what we think of in terms of rock and roll edgy fashion really coming into the mainstream and that was in the 60s and 70s with mod looks rock and roll even the introduction of boho hippie styles all of this kind of went hand in hand you get more psychedelic looks and you get women like Debbie Harry and Stevie Nicks leading the way. In the 90s and early noughties, we of course get grunge with Nirvana and also we get seen with Hayley Williams and it becomes something very different to what it originally looked like. By 2020, most of what we wear could be described as what would have once been seen as edgy or alternative. So what does it even mean nowadays? You can't just sling on a leather jacket and call yourself alternative. It's definitely different to back then when you could define it through just a certain item of clothing or a certain style. So what has all of this got to do with body types? Like I said, you can't just throw on an item of clothing like you used to and call yourself edgy or even look intimidating or, or different to ordinary style. I have no style or sense of fashion. Well, um, I think that depends on what you're- no, no. That wasn't a question. So how does each person create a look which is more this alternative effect? And just to get you up to speed, there are 10 body types hypothesized by a man called David Kibbe based on this idea of yin and yang balance or soft and sharp balance. Unlike other body shape theories, the idea isn't to change the look of your body to 
create a perfect silhouette, so to basically look like an hourglass, there's nothing to do with correcting your body, it's about simply dressing in harmony with the feel that you give off with your body type. However, we don't always want to look our most traditionally feminine, our most elegant, or our most stunning. Sometimes the intention is to look more modest for a job interview, or to look more intelligent, or to look more feminine or innocent when you're meeting the parents, or to create more of this avant-garde feel, and how a person might do this will depend on their body type. Where one person might wear really heavy makeup and look really cool and rebellious, it might make someone else look sort of clownish and childlike, and obviously if that's not the effect you're wanting to create, then you're wasting your time. So how then do you look edgy and alternative with your body type? The main overarching idea is that if you contradict your lines, you will end up looking more edgy and alternative. But you have to be very clever with this because sometimes if you contradict your lines, you will end up looking more like clownish and childlike, like you're imitating something else. And with that said, a quick disclaimer, some things will always apply. If you wear darker colors, you tend to look more edgy. And the only time this isn't really a thing is if you're a winter. So winters who have dark hair, which really contrasts with their pale skin, when they wear black, it doesn't look so edgy at all. It tends to look very elegant. So the colors is more to do with your color seasons, but most people are not winters. So when most people wear black, they tend to look more edgy because it's in contradiction with their color season. So first of all, let's look at romantics. Romantics are the most soft type and they look best in soft fashions in soft styles, shine, rounded patterns like florals, in very typically feminine styles. So waist emphasis, short lines, um, tulle, lace, that kind of thing. So all of this is going to make a romantic look feminine and elegant and wearing lace might make a dramatic look more edgy, it's going to make a romantic look softer and more feminine and more delicate. If you look at Madonna as a great example of a romantic who is known for their edgy alternative style, she tends to wear a lot of corsets which are very restricted and tight for her frame and they're quite structured so these would look really great on dramatics but on romantics they can look quite constrained. This is a pattern you're going to see again and again as I go through each of these body types. It's kind of restrained feel is going to make someone look more edgy. And it also goes the other way, so we're kind of looking for extremes. So oversized things, as you can see Helena Bonham Carter wear, lots of layers, lots of extreme oversized sort of styles is going to look much more edgy and much more rebellious on a romantic than it would say on a flamboyant natural who have broad shoulders and they're much larger in their stature than a romantic who are very small and delicate. So this idea of being overwhelmed by the clothes that you wear is something that you see a lot. And for a romantic, that's dressing in large shapes. And you can also see Madonna do that as well in this very iconic white outfit where she wears the corset and this very large tool skirt. It looks like she's playing with typical fashion rules in a darker, edgier sort of way. Romantics are also going to look edgy if they wear chunky accessories, so large heavy bangles or large chunky metal necklaces or wearing chains or studs, these sort of things are very dramatic. So they're for people with larger bone structures, they'll look more elegant and more timeless, whereas on a romantic, it's instantly gonna look more edgy. You can see how Drew Barrymore in the 90s, she dressed in a lot of rebellious sort of styles and she was often drawn and still is drawn to more masculine silhouettes, so a lot more tailored styles, which are obviously in contrast with the delicate little soft sort of styles that you would expect to see a romantic in if they were trying to look timeless and elegant. This makes her look like she's really rebelling against her body type and therefore rebelling against beauty standards. Something else that you can see draw Barrymore do is she draws on this kind of 60s and 70s sort of boho edgy sort of aesthetic, this sort of boho rock and roll sort of aesthetic and she dresses in a mix of textures and a mix of patterns so rather than having this clean sort of appearance having these lots of different patterns which don't necessarily mix with her body type again makes her look a little bit more unruly and less put together and pretty much all of that applies to theatrical romantics as well I couldn't find the list of theatrical romantics is short and I couldn't really find any that were particularly edgy so I've kind of left that I think everything that I say about romantics applies there 
the soft gamine I think who epitomizes kind of grunge style is Winona Ryder. I think that gamines draw on natural to look more edgy and naturals draw on gamine to look more edgy. So I think you can kind of flip the two and you get edgy styles. So Winona Ryder, she really draws on natural. You can see her in oversized, heavier fabrics, which really contradict with her delicate bone structure. If she were to draw on dramatic and wear sharper styles, like some of the types do as we move forward, this would work a lot more for her body type. So it would be a lot more in harmony with who she is as Gamines have this sharpness, they have vertical in their silhouette. So to dress for that would look a bit off, but not necessarily in this edgy sort of way. So for Gamines, it's very easy to look unruly just with a couple of things being a bit baggy, being a little less fitted. So seeing Winona Ryder do that is why this looks so edgy. Whereas a look like this with this leather jacket and these jeans on a natural, doesn't look edgy at all like you can see I think Cindy Crawford wears a similar look and it doesn't particularly look edgy or alternative on her it just looks like model off duty so you can see how types would need different things to create this kind of look you can also see Winona Ryder um, during this period with her kind of Beetlejuice era she has kind of long unruly hair and gamines often look really good with their hair being shorter to honor their short vertical line so she looks a little less timeless and it looks like she's just letting it fly away and this looks kind of crazy and almost a little bit gothic on her but something you'll notice a lot of these celebrities do, like Winona Ryder, is they will combine these things with things that do work for their body type. For example, this image of Winona Ryder in this pearl necklace, these soft and delicate things honor her romantic undercurrent. She still looks edgy, but she has something to ground her in her body type and still look cool and not like a caricature. So this is what makes it kind of her own personal style and something which really stands the test of time rather than looking like a caricature of the edgy aesthetic. I think for flamboyant gamines, it's quite hard to look edgy. This picture of Zoe Deschanel really shows what I mean by looking like a caricature of edgy. She still looks sweet, she still looks delicate, she still looks soft, and there's nothing really intimidating about her at all. It just looks like she's wearing a costume, and this is kind of what we want to avoid. We want our style to look like who we are and like we're really expressing ourselves rather than trying to pretend to be something. So here you can see that Zoe doesn't look particularly intimidating, she doesn't look edgy, even though she's wearing all the hallmarks of edgy things like chokers, dark colors, and that sort of thing. So this is what we want to avoid. I feel like that's a really good example. Someone who I think does this quite well in a very different sort of way is Julia Garner. <laughs> In this, what we might think of as edgy look with the black lace and sort of corset sort of style and doll-like gothic sort of dress, she just looks elegant, she just looks timeless. There's nothing particularly scary or alternative or different about this look, it just looks like a typical red carpet look. Whereas throw her in this Met Gala outfit. Now it's not edgy in a typical sense, I know, it's not particularly gothic or anything, but I think that it kind of gets the point across of contradicting your lines makes you look harsher. So with those tight, small curls, which look very elegant and feminine on Marilyn Monroe, they make her face look a lot sharper, which is a look we don't see when she plays Anna Delvey. When she's Anna Delvey, she wears her hair very sleek and this much more closely matches her flamboyant gamine lines. So when she's in these tight curls, it makes her look much sharper. You can also see this dress looks quite edgy and avant-garde on her because it's very long, which contradicts the her short vertical line. And it's also this sort of shiny shimmer, which contradicts the sharpness in her frame. This long sparkly dress makes her look futuristic, whereas on another type, this would just be an elegant sort of style. Classics, I think, being one, have possibly the hardest time looking edgy and cool. So with just one or two details, you can look more edgy as a classic. You really don't have to try very hard at all. And it's very easy as a classic to look like you're trying way too hard, which I have been there. <laughs> it's just so easy to look like caricature and look clownish. You're the ones who are gonna struggle with this the most. So just with a little drama, I would recommend for classics in general, maybe a couple of sparkles if you're a dramatic classic, or maybe a couple of studs, or just even the darker color itself is probably gonna be enough for a classic to look quite edgy, which I'm showing here today. Like I've not got many edgy details on, but I look a lot edgier than normal. Whereas on another type, this entire outfit 
possibly wouldn't look edgy or different on their metal. I think Olivia Munn is a classic who demonstrates edgy style quite well. She has a very sort of modern, normal look. She's not particularly known for being edgy, but I think she has an edgier style than the other classics we can look at. She keeps everything very tailored and very minimal, but she'll just have one or two elements which are different. For example, she might have an all black outfit, but she'll have ripped jeans, and that is enough to make her look like she's doing an edgy outfit, which it just wouldn't for a different type. A soft natural I can think of who I think dresses edgy. She's not verified, but I think Billie Eilish is a great example of this, how she draws on gamine lines and flamboyant natural lines. She does a mix of the two um, to create this, I really don't care kind of appearance. And I'm talking not so much nowadays, but her original sort of style when she was about 17, 18, where she wears like the checkered trousers. That's very gamine, having this high contrast, sharp geometric compact patterns looks very rebellious on her because it doesn't fit in with the oversized, soft, delicate, draped fabric, which is gonna look super elegant on her. I'm not prepared for these videos at the moment, so sorry, change of occasion because the light died again. <laughs> um, but where was I? So basically soft naturals can look more edgy by wearing more boxy, compact styles, basically drawing on the gamine as this is gonna contradict with, their, with the width in their frame. Flamboyant naturals, I think, to look more edgy can draw on the dramatic. For example, Emma Stone as Cruella, you can see that to make her look more like a villain, to make her look more evil, to make her look more much more intimidating, she wears these super sharp and tailored styles, like the super sharp coat that you see her in. I think that this, again, looks more constricted and contradicts with the width in their frame. Rather than drawing on romantic, which is on the, technically on the opposite side of the spectrum, they get to still dress in their long lines, which looks super elegant and cool on them, but just having everything a little bit tighter and more restricted creates this more edgy feel. You can see this with Uma Thurman as well, another flamboyant natural who wears the short, sharp, blunt wig in Pulp Fiction, and she wears the tight, dark choker as well. This high neckline is very associated with sharper types because it keeps that sharpness really close to your face. If you search edgy Anne Hathaway or edgy Jennifer Lawrence, you instantly get the shorter hairstyles because again, it's very sharp, it's very short, which contradicts with their wide and long lines. This makes them look more alternative. And I think this huck backs to that thing that I was saying about Jo March and Little Women, dressing in these more masculine associated styles can make someone instantly look more edgy, even if that wasn't the look they were going for. When a gamine wears shorter hairstyles like Winona Ryder, they just look more cute and more innocent and more pixie-like, whereas this isn't really the effect that you would say that Kaylee Cuoco has or Anne Hathaway. Anne Hathaway doesn't particularly look that edgy, but she looks edgier than her normal self. You'll often see flamboyant naturals who play edgy sort of roles in pinstripes or sharp geometric patterns. Again, this is drawing on the dramatic or maybe even the gamine, same as soft naturals. So dramatics then. Let's go to Taylor Momsen, my muse for this video. I think that she does an amazing job of creating this edgy look, which feels very much like her without looking like a caricature. And I think she does this by drawing on the romantic in combination with some dramatic lines to still make her look cool and make sure that it works for her. So some ways she draws on the romantic is to incorporate a lot of lace and a lot of bows. This makes her look much more intimidating because it brings out the harshness in her features being so long and sharp. It makes her look much more so, which creates this feeling that it's kind of off in an exciting sort of way. I also think dramatics will draw on the natural by having unruly hair, chunky details, and sort of heavy fabrics like leather. I think that leather pretty much is going to look edgy on every type except flamboyant naturals because it's pretty much a very heavy and thick fabric for most body types. That's another reason you'll often see leather jackets on almost anyone trying to look edgy because it's going to contradict with anyone who doesn't have that slightly heavier or sturdier bone structure to, to take it, which is almost every type other than flamboyant naturals. And she combines this with long necklaces with long corsets which follow the shape of her body. 
I've said corsets for both romantics and dramatics because they're inherently contradictory for both of these body types, I think, because for romantics, they're really, really structured. They're actually very straight at the edges. We often think of corsets as cinching you in at the waist, but the way that they're designed sort of more nowadays, they're actually very straight. So they'll work for a dramatics body type, but combined with the ornate lace, it really contradicts with their straight, not so rounded elements of their body, whereas the structure will contradict with a romantic. But you can see how Madonna does it very differently to Taylor Momsen. So Taylor Momsen wears a sort of corset dress and it kind of stops there in this short line and she'll combine it with these really long socks and garters, whereas Madonna combines this corset with like a really oversized skirt. So you can see how they use the same garment to create the same effect, but in different outfits. I also think Taylor Swift at times has gone more edgy. You can see how she tries to look a lot more edgy during her reputation era. One of the th ways I think she does this very successfully is the bleachella incident. I think this very pale, cool blonde contradicts with her warm coloring Taylor Swift is a spring. So it suddenly really washes her out and this creates a really edgy, rebellious sort of effect. But Taylor also does this by wearing dark colors. Again, contradicts with her coloring, shorter lines. She wears a lot of sparkles, which draws on the romantic rather than the dramatic. So she employs similar techniques to Taylor Momsen. The dramatic lady who's known for rock and roll style in the 90s and noughties is Kate Moss. And I think she draws again on the romantic. So for example, the large furs she wears are very soft and this contradicts with her large, sharp sort of bone structure, um, which is very long. And wearing these soft rounded shapes, again, contradicts her and she looks overwhelmed by it. And I, I would say it's sort of like a romantic slash natural because they're very large oversized sort of shapes which make her look a lot more rock and roll. There aren't a lot of edgy soft dramatics, but I think you could sort of combine what I say for romantics and what I say for dramatics together there because they're dramatics with a romantic undercurrent. I would say soft dramatics are gonna look their most edgy in a cool way when they follow the lines of their silhouettes. So making sure they have waist emphasis, long lines, but maybe with a couple of natural things. So they might wear more distressed fabrics like Christina Hendricks in this denim shirt. This looks um, slightly edgy on her because it doesn't quite match with the soft frame that she has, but it still follows the shape of her body. And so I think that ends up looking really cool. So that's how each of the body types can look more edgy. If you've enjoyed this video, I think you should Check out some of the videos in my playlist on Kibby body types and make sure to check out bodyandstyle.com if you want a consultation from me. I can tell you your body type and give you recommendations how to create the effect that you want, including edgy, if that is something that you're interested in, which I would assume that it is by this point. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.